what's up guys welcome back to the channel today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and first impressions video of a rifle from Palmetto State Armory this is the uh, generation 3 65 Creedmoor and uh, if you guys watched my shot show video from shot show 2019 which was a year ago uh, as I'm filming this video 6.5 Creedmoor was everywhere. Everybody had to have a 6.5 Creedmoor. Palmetto State Armory came out with one that year. And um, it's obviously been a whole year <laughs> since they uh, debuted that rifle. They had 6.5 Creedmoor before that in a Gen 1, a Gen 2. This is the Gen 3. The Gen 2 was awesome. There was a couple things that people identified. They were like, hey, they can use some improvements. So they listened and this is it this is the gen 3 it came out i don't know maybe i don't know maybe it might have been like six months ago or something like that so i finally got my hands on one i did not buy this just for full disclosure but when i'm done with my review i will be sending it back um, if i don't buy it so uh, let's go ahead and do a quick unboxing though because this thing is cool and i want to point out all the the new things that this has over the gen 2 if you're considering a, a 6.5 creedmoor let's take a closer look all right, so it's gonna to ship to your FFL in just a plain Jane cardboard box. By the way, if you guys don't know, Palmetto State Armory has been killing the game lately with all their new rifles, their ARs, their uh, AR hybrids, their AKs. They're just killing it, even handguns too. They're coming out with new handguns. Um, Palmetto State Armory is offering high quality firearms for a very affordable price. And their motto is basically to arm the average citizen. So, uh, <laughs> I mean, I don't know if that's their exact motto, but their, their basic motto is to, you know what, let's get guns out there and arm more um, good citizens. And I, I agree with that. So, let's go ahead and open the box. Wow. Okay, so there's a few things in here that it's not going to come with. <laughs> so, it's not going to come with this bipod. It's not going to come with this scope and mount. Um, that's just some stuff that I already had planned for this uh, video. So if you don't know about 6.5 Creedmoor, it's like a 308 on steroids. Uh, it comes with one Magpul um, 308, 7.62 by 51 magazine. So that's kind of cool, 10, 20 rounds. Uh, I have an extra one uh, from another project too, so I don't have to worry about a whole bunch of reloads. But uh, yeah, it's a really good looking gun right out of the box, as you can see. It's a no frills gun, but um, it does have a lot of cool features for a no-frills gun. Uh, let me get this right out of the gate right away because I know guys are going to be like, well, how much is that thing? I like it already. <laughs> it's only been 30 seconds into the video. I already know I like it. Um, this model here, the Gen 3 6.5 Creedmoor, is going to be about $799, probably less at your local gun stores, which is a screaming deal for 6.5 Creedmoor. And if you don't know 6.5 Creedmoor, Google it. Um, that round is a very fast moving round. It's a bigger round, similar to 308. Packs a punch, and you can actually reach out to one mile with 6.5 Creedmoor, which you really can't do with 308. Um, you can do it, but it's not easy. 6.5 Creedmoor is faster, flatter, and uh, depending on the barrel, um, the way the barrel is built, uh, it should be a whole lot easier to get go out to a thousand yards <laughs> than. Uh, uh, 308 so let's start from the front so this one's going to ship with just your standard bird cage flash hider in the front nothing fancy there meaning it's solid on the bottom with vents on the top to help force the barrel down a little bit so it should push down a little bit not a whole lot really what that's for is to keep the dust signature down when you're shooting in the prone position so the barrel is a 20 inch stainless steel it's actually 416 r stainless steel with a one and eight twist, heavy barrel, heavy profile. Good looking barrel. The gas block in there. So that's one of the first things that's different from the Gen 2 to the Gen 3. So the gas block is black nitride coated for one. The barrel is dimpled from the factory. You can see a set screw right there. That set screw sits inside a dimple that's put in uh, to the barrel from the factory. So when this thing heats up and vibrates, it's not gonna move on you, um, I guess the Gen 2, some of the uh, gas blocks were starting to move forward and they, they would tighten them down super tight. 
uh, but um, they would still move under certain conditions for some people's guns. Uh, they changed that, they fixed that, so that's not going to move at, at all. That's awesome. They also made the um, adjustment for the gas, um, a simple detent. I think there's five adjustments with um, a detent. So the prior model, the Gen 2, uh, you, it was the same setup but without, without detents. So um, it would kind of move around and unscrew on people, so they'd have to put Loctite on there to keep it in a set position. And some people were having a hard time um, with their gas positions staying in that position. So they would have to put, you know, maybe red Loctite, which kind of defeats the purpose, right? So what they did was they changed the design and made it into a detent style so it will not move. You set it and uh, it'll stick. Matter of fact, they even ship with this really long um, hex head wrench. So you can reach down there and make adjustments to it. Um, kind of ridiculous, <laughs> ridiculously long tool. You really only need a tool that's about three or four inches, but they made it long enough to where you could reach any length handguard. So if you went with a longer handguard, this tool will work. <laughs> that's kind of nice. All right, so, and you do have to uh, adjust the uh, gas positions from the front here, not on the sides. So, pretty cool, right? And that's a low profile gas block for the, for the most part. The gas tube is a rifle length gas tube, so it's nice and long, you got that long dwell time. And the difference here between the Gen 2 and the Gen 3, it's actually black nitride coated. Um, apparently that helps with uh, the management of heat and durability in general. So I'll take what I can get. So one of the really nice things about this one is you can see there it has anti-rotation tabs in the handguards. And that's nice because in the old days if you really twisted this handguard on, on like regular AR-15s, Without those anti-rotation tabs, um, you, you could actually unscrew your barrel nut if you had a loose uh, gas tube and actually pinch your gas tube. And in some cases, if you're you know, a, a gorilla, you could actually bend your gas tube. So it's nice that those anti-rotation pins are in there. And then also too, um, sometimes if you're a gorilla, you could pull this forward um, off of the, ga uh, off of the uh, barrel nut if these screws here weren't tight enough. So how they solved that was they put three um, hex head bolts in there, so nice and solid, clamping over that, that uh, barrel nut. And they have two grub screws in here that sit in a slot. So there's no way this, this handguard is either gonna move forward, and there's no way it's gonna rotate. So really, really solid setup. I like that a lot. Beautiful. I don't think I, I would want to even change that out for anything else, to be honest with you. So the upper and lower receivers are just your, for the most part, standard type 308 um, receiver sets. They're uh, precision machine from Ford 7075 T6 aluminum, then black anodized hard coated to uh, mil 8625 type 3 class 2. Whatever that means. <laughs> That's all from their website. But, uh, yeah, I mean, obviously they're putting in some uh, good quality here. 1913 Picatinny rails on top for your um, optics. Just a standard type dust cover. Shell deflector. Keep those shells from hitting you in the face. Forward assist. Some people like them, some people don't. Some people don't care. Me personally, I don't care. I've heard people say that, um, especially if you're a hunter, that you can do a press check or whatever check to see if there's an actual round in the chamber and slowly let the bolt go forward quietly as you can and then seat that bolt 100% by pushing on the forward assist. So that does make sense to me. Whatever. Your mileage may vary. Leave a comment below and tell me what you think about forward assist. Charging handle is just a 308 length charging handle, mil spec style. There's really nothing fancy about that. Um, if, if I had to nitpick, I would probably change this out to something with a little bit more leverage that sticks out a little bit more. Just because when you have an optic up here, it's a little hard to reach when you have the optic set right here. But it's still serviceable. I'm sure you can still get the job done. The lower is just a no frills 308 lower. 
it's a good looking lower. I mean, simple, straightforward, nothing fancy. Are there more higher end, you know, whiz bang ninja fight lowers out there? Yeah, sure, they are, but they're also way more expensive than this gun. <laughs> We're talking hundreds more. 308 magazines. It should take all 308 magazines as far as I know. I don't have any other ones to try out. But these are Magpul ones and they're respected. Fit in nicely. Locks back on the last shot. Bolt release. We'll take that magazine out. It's just a standard bolt release. Selector lever. So it's safe. Fire. Magazine release, again, real simple stuff here, nothing fancy. Integrated trigger guard, which I actually like because um, those trigger guards are usually the weak parts on uh, aluminum uh, receivers. So nice and solid, you don't have to worry about ever breaking this or snapping or cracking it. You don't have to worry about roll pins getting weak. It's all integrated, that's nice. Pistol grip is like an A1 style without the nub. And it's got a texture to it. It's kind of like rubbery, like a Magpul Plus. It's kind of sticky. I kind of like that. It's actually really nice. It's got the little uh, palm swell in the back here, so you can get that nice length for your trigger finger. And the trigger, uh, from what I've heard, is nickel boron coated. So that must that must be pretty nice. I haven't shot it yet. Uh, but uh, I'll, I'll report back on this trigger. It is reported to be a two-stage trigger. So I believe they said it is two and a half pounds on the first part of the take-up and then two pounds on the final take-up on the second stage. So we'll see how that works out in the real world. But that's good to know. So moving to the back, you have a castle nut here. So you have it staked here, one and then staked here too. It's actually double staked. And uh, that probably comes in handy when this thing's you know, being shot quite a bit. A lot of recoil you know, with that uh, 6.5 Creedmoor. A lot of vibrations going on. It's good to have that nice and solid. The end plate, just a standard end plate, nothing special. It does ship with a Magpul STR buttstock, which is really nice. Um, kind of like an evolution of the CTR buttstock for the most part. It is a six position stock, so there's position one as the shortest position. Two, three, four, five, and six for the really big guys. So big guys, small guys, and everybody in between. It locks in there too, so it takes out that wobble. You have a rubberized butt pad in the back. I'm sure you can swap these out for different types, like Magpul is known for. It does have that little nub right there, so when you're Pushing this into your shoulder, you can get a nice good grip on it for those precision shots. It's got sling slots if you want to sling this on your shoulder. It's already set up to put in QD mounts. If you want to mount some QD mounts in here, get a QD mount kit. And then here is your compartments for whatever. Survival gear, cleaning gear, spare parts, whatever. That's kind of cool. And it looks like to be waterproof or water resistant. It's on both sides. And from what I've heard um, on this uh, kind of buttstock, if you got a beard or if your face is just sensitive for the most part, that ledge there is super comfortable. So I really like that. Kind of reminds me of a B5 Systems buttstock. All right, so that's a look on the outside. Let's look on the inside. To take it down, just push the buttons just like you normally would. And oh yeah, let's take a look at the upper. All right, so let's take a look at the BCG or bolt carrier group. First impressions, looks really nice. I can tell right out of the gate that it is full auto style because you have those two notches right there that line up. You got all that extra mass back there. Firing pin is shrouded style. Sometimes you'll see uh, carriers with um, cut out here exposing your firing pin. This is the shrouded version. Very nice. The finish is nice. It's all black nitrided. So I know there's a lot of fans of black nitride. Really nice. Uh, PSA does um, advertise that this bolt carrier group is made by a company called Toolcraft. 
And uh, I don't know a whole lot about Toolcraft. Um, I do know they've been around for a very long time, since the 90s. So well over 20 years making quality stuff. And they seem to have a good reputation. The bolt itself is made out of 9310 steel. And the carrier is made out of 8620 steel. And then looking at the gas key, it is staked nicely, meaning that uh, you can see some material going into the uh, fasteners. Those are grade eight fasteners. So very good looking bolt carrier group for sure. Uh, at the front here, you'll see obviously 308 sized bolt lugs, nice and thick and beefy. And then here's something that's really cool, dual ejectors. There's an ejector there on the bottom, an ejector there on the top. So when you got that heavier brass from uh, basically 308 or 65 Creedmoor, it's going to have double the power to shove that out of the receiver. So that's kind of nice. And I've heard some guys say that's probably going to be the gold standard for uh, bigger bore ARs. So it's nice to know that they got dual ejectors on this uh, 65 Creedmoor Gen 3. And then also, you'll see a nice big extractor claw right there. And um, I guess maybe in the past, they've had complaints that it wasn't strong enough. So they uh, put a really strong extractor spring in there. They call it a power spring. So that's a nice feature as well. So you can get a really good grip on that case slip and extract it out of your chamber. Really nice. Looking at the upper receiver, just like on any other AR-10, it's beefy. Look at that. That is crazy beefy. There's a lot of material there because this is a big gun with a lot of pressure and a lot of recoil. So that's just nice to see that this thing is very well made. Beefy, strong, and probably will last generations. <laughs> Craftsmanship looks really good. If you look right there, M4 feed ramps basically allows the bullet tips to ride up the receiver and then into the uh, chamber of the barrel reliably. All right, so when you look at the lower receiver, the first thing you're going to notice it's um, obviously a DPMS uh, 308 pattern. And look at the thickness of this receiver. <laughs> Definitely a lot of material there. Thicker, beefier, stronger for those uh, bigger calibers, you know, 308, 65 Creedmoor. That's nice. And then if you look here on the receiver extension, again, more material, thicker, beefier, really nice. But then you'll see a little cut out here, like a relief cut there, and another one right there. PSA did that because customers were saying that uh, some of their aftermarket BCGs that they put in their uh, 308s, um, we're rubbing. So PSA listened to their customers and now they provide relief cuts to allow a more more wider variety of aftermarket BCGs, which is nice. They didn't have to do that, but they did. So really cool that they did that. And then the buffer tube itself is a carbine length buffer tube, not a rifle length. So the way they were able to get away with that is they went with a shorter buffer. So if you look at this buffer, that is a short buffer in a 308. Usually these are longer, but it still is a heavy rated buffer. So that's how they did that. And I called PSA and asked them about that. And they said, yep, it should be good to go. Uh, it doesn't say H on mine and they, they confirmed that it should be fine. So I think some are marked H and some aren't, but um, PSA said this is a heavy buffer even, it's not, even though it's not marked H. And then the spring itself is just a standard 308 spring. All right, let's uh, spice this thing up a little bit before we go. And for those wondering what optic I'm gonna be running on this thing, this is the primary arms. ACSS 1 to 6 variable power. I absolutely love this uh, optic. It was uh, given to me by Dimitri over at Primary Arms for testing, and I'm still testing this thing out, and I love it, man. Can't say enough about the uh, ACSS 
uh, one to six power. I'll probably bump it up to uh, a one to eight or even a more powerful one later, but the one to six is just awesome. This is calibrated for 308, so we'll see how it does in the 6.5 Creedmoor. The scope mount is by American Defense. Those guys freaking rock. Thanks a lot, American Defense, for sending this out for testing as well. Um, built like a tank. There's no way I'm going to break this one. And it has the uh, quick throw levers with the locking system in there, so this thing is not coming off. I'll probably break the receiver before I break this mount. <laughs> but uh, I actually had a, a lightweight mount for this scope. Uh, that was sent with the scope from Dimitri over at Primary Arms and I broke it because I just torqued down on it too too hard. Um, it was a lightweight mount so I probably shouldn't have done that as hard as I did but um, this one is not going to break. Sorry Dimitri. <laughs> but uh, yeah, scope's awesome, mount's awesome. I can't wait to uh, get this thing out of the range. Alright guys, so I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, unboxing and first impressions video my first impressions of the uh, PSA 65 Creedmoor this thing is bad ass <laughs> I love it so far I absolutely love it um, of course I gotta shoot it and see how it shoots but on first impressions just out of the box I am in love with this thing man I, I have another 308 and um, I love that one too but this one in 65 Creedmoor whew, if I can get out to a thousand yards with my low skill sets <laughs> I'm gonna be really happy. <laughs> Love the 20 inch stainless steel barrel. I wish it had a better brake, but again, I can swap that out to whatever I like. I love the uh, adjustable detent gas block. The uh, hand guards with the uh, anti-rotation pins. The dual ejectors is awesome. Extra strong power spring in the uh, extractor. STR buttstock. The nickel boron two-stage trigger. Man, I think you're getting a lot, I mean a lot, guys, for only $8.99 for 6.5 Creedmoor. Pretty cool. We'll see how it does at the range. <laughs> if I can get to 1,000 yards, like I said, I'm going to be in heaven for $8.99, man. That is just so cool. Please hit that like button to support my channel. I appreciate it. It helps me out a lot. Ring that bell so you can be notified when new videos are uploaded and leave a comment below let me know what you think about the PSA 65 Creedmoor generation 3 thanks a lot guys take care